What made you decide to enlist? Well, there wasn't any jobs out there, and the war was imminent. You know, it's, we knew what was going to happen. Why did you pick the Army Air Corps? I guess we were close to Barksdale Field in Shreveport. Yeah, I just always liked airplanes. Well, when I was sworn in, I said, what in the world have I done? Got tied up for four years of the Air Force. Old country boy, I had never been over 60 miles from home. And uh, it's quite a revelation for me. Well, the Japanese were collecting all our metals, scrap metal and stuff, and they were all predicting that the Japs were going to hit us. We didn't know where. I think the politicians knew. Oh, they'd buy it up and, and uh, ship it to Japan, remelt it, make guns out of it, bullets, and tanks. They were buying it fast as they could buy it. Well, sworn in, of course. Once you take the oath, you're in. And they put had to put us in tents for two, three weeks. I remember I had a white shirt on. Went to, and I still had it on three weeks later. And a fellow by the name of Colonel Patrick came through there. He said, how long have you fellows been here? He said, three weeks. He called a sergeant. He said, take these men down and get them uniforms. And man, he, he, he put some action on some people. But I remember they issued his old uh, OD uniforms, all wool, in the summertime. And I said, I didn't think too much of it when I first got in there. They didn't have room for us in the barracks. You know, Barksdale is a permanent base. And they didn't have room in the barracks without shipping some out. Do you remember what you were doing on December 7th, 1941? I was in Shreveport, Louisiana. It was on the weekend. We got word that everybody had to report back to the base. I was already in the service. Do you remember how you felt when you heard that the U.S. had been bombed? Well, we we kind of expected not exactly Pearl Harbor, but uh, I know we didn't have any any, any kind of equipment that box deal. Had had some old B-10 bombers. They call high altitude bombers 12,000 feet. And had three or four or five of old P-35s. Two or three of them were sitting around. And we had one machine gun in my whole outfit. The industry, industry of, this, of this country has saved us because they switched over to, you know, tanks and cars and tanks and so forth. They did a Magnificent job. Oh, oh Himimoto, uh, what his name was, that Japanese fellow said, I'm afraid we have awakened a sleeping giant. Tell me about your boot training experiences. What do you remember about that? I remember it was tough. We had some old regular army boiled out of Panama, and they were tough and rough. But they made soldiers out of us. Of course, they tried to get some good physical shape. And obey a command without question. They sent half of us, kept half of us at Boxdale, the other half to Savannah, Georgia. Luckily, I didn't half stayed at Boxdale. Savannah Bunch went to the Philippines. They sent me to a welding school first. Then they decided they needed mechanics. They sent me to Chanukahville, Illinois, for uh, to a airplane mechanic school. Well, my job as a mechanic was to keep airplanes flight ready. But later on, I went to uh, aviation cadets. And I wanted to fly. I wanted to quit wiping grease and start flying. I applied and. Uh, I was staff sergeant at that time, and they at first turned me down on account of astigmatism. And about a month later, they called me up. Said, "We need you now." 
So I think they're losing pilots faster than they wanted to. I've been uh, three years enlisted man, and some of the guys coming into service out of college, never been in the service in their life, they were our superiors. They made commandants out of them. And they'd rack you back. And, you know, you had to be tough to take it mentally. Took primary training in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. I took basic training in uh, Montgomery and uh, advanced training in Knoxville Field, Alabama. And from there I went to uh, uh, Bradley Field, Connecticut. Started flying uh, P P-47s, P-51s. Must have been about uh, November of 43. Uh, I recall it wasn't, wasn't that cold. And they sent us to a place called Duxford, England, which was a fighter base. You'd be flying fighters, escorting bombers, be strafing, die bombing, anything a fighter would do. Do you recall your first mission? Uh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Wonder why they shooting at me. I wasn't mad at anybody. I was just doing a job, and uh, they started shooting, knocking holes in my airplane. I, I thought it was kind of serious then. I said, those fellas, they mean business down there, I think. So I decided I'd better shoot back. It was un uneventful. I got a few holes on my airplane, but a small caliber fire. We take bombers in and bring them back out. We go back in and strafe airfields and trains and anything, any target of opportunity. My flight leader and myself saw a couple of planes slipping along the on the deck. We we, we dove down for fifteen thousand feet. He went in. I saw him pull off. I come in about a mile behind him. I said, look like a P-51 wing tanks. And I, I hollered at him, what was it? He didn't say anything. By the time I got close enough, it was German ME-262 jet. I got some, I got some burst in him, but uh, they started on me from the ground, looked like sparkles. I said, well, I better get out of here. And a friend of mine shot him down. But when I broke off, I climbed out to altitude by myself. I couldn't find anybody in my outfit. And I, I started gaining altitude, heading toward home, and uh, I looked up above me, and said, here, here come four fighters down. I said, oh, I've had it now. The only thing I could do was turn into them. I couldn't run. They whizzed by me, they were 251s. Man, I latched on to them. We went home. <laughs> I thought they might have been German, me too. They were friendless. I remember one flight over Berlin, we had a, a thousand bombers and 800 fighters. And you can imagine the contrail that pull almost push you on instruments when you went through it. But that, that was a maximum effort. I shot one down. We did most of the strafing on the ground. I, we tried to get them on the ground for good. But after I got there, the, the Americans had uh, more or less had to control the skies. And, uh, We didn't get many dog. I got in a couple of dog fights, but uh, most of mine were on the ground. Trains and ground, uh, troop trains and things of that sort. Job was to keep German fighters off of bombers. And uh, once we did that, we could go back in and strafe uh, targets of opportunity, which meant 
troop trains and tank columns and and by the way, when Patton uh, got loose, I was headed to Berlin, politician stopped him, held off his gas. They told us, said, don't shoot any tank cobs. Said, Patton, we don't know where Patton is. He was headed to Berlin. <laughs> they wanted to let the Russians take Berlin. Politics, I made close friends. Well, you lost, when you lost somebody, you, you know, you, I lost two of her room, my roommates. And, uh, I still keep in touch with some of them. I got air medal in five clusters. And every other medal from there on down. I didn't get a DFC or anything like that. Every five missions you flew, you got the air medal. We wrote, uh, letters. That was called, what they call, V-mail. They came off a mission that had a, a quart of uh, rye whiskey sitting there. They call it mission whiskey. And that did away with all stress. Do you remember VE Day? Where were you on VE Day? Oh, I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean on a boat heading for Japan. Yeah, I was getting third day leave in the States, and I was going going over to And how did you feel when you heard the war was over in Europe? I'm glad of it. <laughs> it grabbed the wind down. The Germans knew they were lost. And we carried uh, 20 p 51 to Sweden, Stockholm, in exchange for uh, some of our pilots that went in, got a shot up, went in Sweden. Of course, they had the neutral, Sweden was a neutral country, and they had to put them in prison. But we swapped out those 20 planes for our prisoners and spent uh, two weeks over there, courtesy, uh, courtesy of the American government. All we had to do was sign the shit anywhere we went. That's, that's the best two weeks I spent. Do you have any thoughts about the the United States dropping the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? What did you think of that? I know one thing saved a lot of American lives. I thought about it the other night, all the, you know, the young children, babies. But war, war. I, I think a lot about it. I think about the innocent people that got killed. But it saved a lot of our lives. There's swap out. I managed some dry cleaning plants in New Orleans, and uh, now I bought my own plant in Bassett, Louisiana. And then I was elected mayor there for 16 years. I have a lifetime membership in. American Legion and VFW and, and those things. I often wonder what would have happened without the war. But it was, that was during the Depression, you know, 36. Uh, people didn't have, couldn't get jobs. If you got a job at $3 a week, or $6 a week, if it's a good job, P-51, best airplane ever built. You're lucky to get to fly one of those things. My airplane do 435, straight and level. The military, I enjoyed most of my service in there. And the food was good, regardless of what they say. All you gotta do is eat up here. <laughs> we had good food. <laughs> Stay out of war if possible. And try to live your life where you want you to be proud of it.